Hello everyone, welcome to PSPICE Tutorials. In this session, I'll be simulating the input, output and transfer characteristics of an NPN transistor in common collector configuration. Let us start with the circuit. At the input, which is the base to collector, we have VBB. At the output, which is across the emitter to collector, we have VEE. The input resistance is denoted as R1 and the load resistance is denoted as R2. In the common collector or grounded collector configuration, the collector is connected to ground through the supply. Thus, the collector terminal is common to both the input and the output. The input signal is connected directly to the base terminal, while the output signal is taken from across the emitter load resistor as shown in the diagram here. This type of configuration is commonly known as voltage follower or emitter follower circuit. The common collector or the emitter follower configuration is very useful for impedance matching applications because of its very high input impedance in the region of hundreds of thousands of ohms while having a relatively low output impedance. In the common collector configuration, the load resistance is connected in series with the emitter terminal, so the load current is equal to that of the emitter current. Since base and collector currents flow into the transistor, we call them by convention as positive currents. On the other hand, since emitter current flows out of the transistor, it will be regarded as negative current. Before I start the simulation, I would like to tell you that I am not going to discuss the theoretical and mathematical aspects of this configuration. In fact, I have already made a video on that and I would highly suggest you to watch that video first and then continue with this video. I will put the link of the same in the description below. Right. With that, we start with the input characteristics. Input characteristics are obtained by plotting the voltage across the input terminals VBC and recording the input current IB at a fixed value of the voltage across the output terminals VEC. Note that the negative terminal of the supply VBB is connected to the base terminal. As the input voltage VBB is increased, a negative voltage is applied across the base to collector terminals and therefore it will be reverse passed. Therefore, when you increase the VBB, the base current starts to decrease. If VBB is further increased, the current becomes lesser and lesser and eventually, depending on the values of other parameters in the circuit, the current will reach zero. Let us start with the simulation of input characteristics first. Please note, I am going to use the student version of the PSPICE software in order to simulate the configuration results. I will start with the launching application which is Capture Student. I am going to create a new project here and I will name it as NPNCC New. I will make sure the type of the project is analog or mixed AD and I will save it at my desktop by creating a folder there. I am going to name the folder as NPNCC. I select the folder, press OK and everything is now fine. I press OK. Then you will be prompted and you will be asked whether you want to create the project based upon an already existing project or you would like to create a blank project. Here I would like to create a blank project. So select create a blank project and press OK. This will get you into the schematic window. Right. We will now start to place parts. To place part, you need to first left click on the schematic window and you will then be given an option in the menu items by the name place. You select, you go to the menu option place and select part. Then here you are going to search for the transistor of choice. I am going to select Q2N2222. This is the transistor I will be using for simulation experiments. Right. I would like to now rotate it twice so that I can make the connections as shown in the diagram I already have previously shown you. Right. As per the diagram I have shown you, we require two voltage sources as well as two resistors. I will start with the resistors first. To place a resistor, you simply have to once again go to place part or you can also do so by simply pressing P, P for part from your keyboard. So now you simply have to type R, select R analog and place one across the base and another one across the emitter. 
After that, you require two more voltage sources. So once again, go to parts, type VDC, select the VDC slash source. Now, if you remember the diagram here, both the voltages across the base and emitter are connected in reverse. So I need to come back and make sure I connect them in reverse. In order to rotate the supply, you simply have to press R. Okay. Now I need to connect the components through wires. You can enable connecting by selecting this icon, which is for place wire, or you can simply press W, W for wire from your keyboard. Let me complete the connection first. Right. Now the connection is complete. I'm still supposed to give a ground. So you go to this icon, which is ground, or you can press G from the keyboard and select a zero source. Place it here. Once again, you need to connect the ground to the circuit as well. So I'm enabling wiring and connecting to the ground. Now we need to change the values of R1 and R2. So I'm going to keep R1 as 5K. And I'm going to keep R2 as 1K as it is. So no change there. Now we'll also change the values of V1 and V2. V1 is supposed to be VBB. I'll rename it as VBB. And V2, I'll name it as VEE. Okay, so I'll give the values of VBB as 5 volts and for VEE as 10 volt. Right, with that, the circuit is complete. We are ready to simulate. Before I start the simulation, I'll let you know that you need to create what is called as a profile to start the simulation. To create a profile, you need to go to the menu item pspice, select new simulation profile. You give a name to that, I'll give it as npncc, create, a new pop-up window would appear and here you are supposed to change the analysis type to DC suite because we are going to vary the value of the voltages across the input and output signals, right? So first of all, I'll, I'll show you the settings for the simulation profile for input characteristics. I have in fact divided the profile into two different parts. One is for a single input characteristic curve, another for multiple input characteristic curve. To start with, input characteristics as I already have told you is the variation of input voltage and collecting the values of the input current at multiple values of input voltage. So here I'm going to select my primary source type as VBB. I'm going to vary it between 0 to 5 in terms of 0 0.01. So come back to the simulation profile. Make sure you have selected the primary sweep. Go to the sweep variable as voltage source. You type here the source name, which in fact is VBB. So coming back and typing VBB here, the start value is 0, end value is 5. And I'm going to increment in terms of 0 0.01. Make sure the increment is a small value because smaller the value will get you a smoother curve. Right? Apply. Press OK. Now you are ready to run. You can run using two different ways. One is directly by using this icon for run. Or you can also do so by going to PSPICE menu and select run option. When you run it, you will get another pop-up. You go there. You need to now add traces. So go to menu item trace. Select add trace. You want to plot the base current, select the base current there. But the x-axis is not the base to collector voltage. So you need to change that. To change that, you go to plot, go to axis settings, select x-axis, select axis variable, and select VQ1B. Right? So this is your input characteristic curve. Let me eliminate those grid lines first. Right. So this is what you would get for input characteristics. As the input voltage VBB is increased, a negative voltage is applied across the base to collector terminals and therefore it is reverse biased. So when the reverse bias voltage is applied, the base current is going to decrease. If the value of VBB is increased continuously, then the current IB will start to decrease and at some point it will reach zero. Here, in fact, the value of the sweep range is pretty small. I have only varied it between 0 to 5 volts and that is why you are not making it sure that reaches 0. If I want to make sure the current reaches 0, I simply go to simulation, edit profile, 
and make sure the sweep variable end value is 10 volts. So now you can see, I'm going to rerun the simulation, right? So now you can see the current reaches zero at somewhere around 9.5 volts, right? This you should note is in contradiction to what happens in both the common base as well as common emitter configurations as the input current in those configurations increases with the increase across the input signal voltage. Here, since the base current is positive because it is entering the transistor, but the voltage across the terminals VBC, that is the base to collector terminals is negative. Look at the way in which the VBB is connected. We are going to get the input characteristics in the second quadrant. In fact, we have gotten the same here. This is our zero and X axis is from zero till minus 10 volts. And the Y axis anyhow is representing a positive current and therefore this is in second quadrant. In order to obtain multiple characteristic curves, I need to perform what is called as a nested loop operation. So I will edit my simulation profile now directly from the simulation window. So go to simulation menu item, select edit profile. Now you need to add secondary sweep also. Now the secondary sweep is the other voltage here which is VEE. -E. I'm going to make sure I've selected secondary sweep. Sweep variable should be voltage source type VEE -E, which is the name of the secondary supply and I'm going to vary it between 0 to 10 volts in increments of 5 volts. So it will start the input characteristics for three different values now one at 0, one at 5 and one at 10 right. I'm going to apply press OK. I'm going to run the simulation and show you the final results. Well now you can see in fact you are getting three different curves. When the VEE is 0, you are getting a line which is almost falling on the x-axis itself. When VEE is 5 volts, this is the plot and for 10 volts, this is the plot, right? So that is about the input characteristics. Now I'll continue to the output characteristics. Output characteristics are obtained by plotting the voltage across the output terminals VEC and recording the output current IE at a fixed value of the input current IB. Note that the negative polarity of the supply VEE -E is connected to the emitter. If the values of VBB and VEE -E are such that the potential difference between the base and emitter terminal is greater than the built-in turn-on voltage or knee voltage, the base to emitter junction will be forward biased. Since the voltage across the base to collector terminals is negative, the collector to base junction is always reverse biased. Therefore, the transistor in this particular configuration will never enter the saturation region and will only operate in the active region. So when VEE -E is increased, the voltage across the base to emitter terminals will also increase and hence the emitter current will also increase. Right, so now let us start the simulation for the output characteristics. Right, so the profile settings for the output characteristics are as shown here. The primary type is VEE -E and the secondary source type is VBB. I'm going to vary the primary voltage source between 0 to 10 in terms of 0 0.01 volts. And I'm going to vary the secondary voltage between 0 to 10 again and now in terms of 2 volts increments. So let us go and edit the simulation profile. The primary sweep variable is VEE. -E. I'm going to vary between 0 to 10 in terms of 0 0.01. The secondary sweep variable is VBB. I'm going to vary it between once again 0 to 10. Now in terms of 2 volts and apply. Let us run the simulation. I'll add the trace for the emitter current because that is our output current. Now I'll change the X axis to emitter voltage. I'll remove the grid lines also. Right. So this is what actually the output characteristics for a common collector configuration of an NPN transistor would look like. Now, if you're wondering why we are getting this type of characteristic curves, we go back to the circuit and analyze it. You see that the voltage VBB is connected in such a way that its negative terminal is connected to the base and the positive terminal is connected to the collector. So therefore, the base to collector region is always going to be reverse passed. So for a transistor to be sent to the saturation region, the only condition is the base to emitter junction has to be forward passed. So is the base to collector, which is usually the collector to base junction, which is also to be forward passed.
Now in this configuration, since the way in which VBB is connected across the base and the collector is such that the collector to base junction is always reverse biased, the transistor will never enter saturation region. With that, we now go to the final characteristic which is for the transfer. Now the transfer characteristic curves are obtained by plotting the voltage across the input terminals which is VBC and recording either the output current IE or the voltage across the output terminals VEC. Right? Let us first look at the settings for the transfer characteristic curves. The only variable we will be using here is the input voltage which is VBB and I am going to vary it between 0 to 5 volts in increments of 0 0.01 volts. Let us go and set the simulation profile for this. I will eliminate the secondary sweep now. So the primary sweep variable is the input voltage which is VBB and I am going to vary it between 0 to 5 volts in terms of 0 0.01 volts. Apply press OK, run the simulation. Now you need to add the trace for the emitter current which is output current and the x-axis needs to be changed to the base voltage so which is VQ1B. I will remove those grid lines also. Right. So now you can see you are obtaining an almost linear curve. This is because when the base to emitter junction is forward biased, the collector to base junction is reverse biased and any increase in the input voltage VBB will increase the voltage across the emitter terminal and therefore the voltage across the emitter to collector terminal also increases. Since VEC is increasing, the output current IE will also increase and hence the linear graph is obtained. You can also show the transfer characteristic by plotting the output terminal voltages which is VEC with respect to VQ1B. Now to show that I am going to add another plot window and in this I am going to trace the emitter voltage. I will remove those grid lines again. Right. So the lower graph is the variation of the output current with respect to input voltage and the upper graph is the variation of output voltage with respect to input voltage. So that is about the transfer characteristic curves. Well, that brings us to the end of this session. To summarize, we discussed and simulated the input, output and transfer characteristics of an NPN transistor in the common collector configuration. If you like this video, press that like button and leave a comment. If you want to watch my future videos as well, you can always subscribe to my channel. Well, that's it from this session. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.